Ah, yes, hello, dear. So we're back. So, um, any questions? Anything you want to know about before we, we dive, dive in a little further? One question. How does the masculine and the feminine fit into the game, both in a genetic sense and in a divine sense? So how do the masculine and feminine fit together in the game? So not all species have a masculine and a feminine, as you find on your planet. Uh, some of them uh, can reproduce without needing one or the other, but the majority of your species do have a masculine and a feminine simply as an expression of duality, because you are playing in a game of duality. Now, with Fall of Atlantis, that was the split, the final split in your um, combined awareness, if you will, of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Neither one after that were very divine. All right, it was the lower frequencies or the lower aspects of the masculine energy and the, and the female energy, and it went back and forth between the suppression of both. Now, there are other star systems, the Sirius system in particular, uh, there, is, uh, there was a large period of time in which the feminine was the, was the dominant, and the feminine suppressed the masculine. It wasn't just about the worship and reverence of the female, it was the suppression of the divine feminine, of the suppression by the divine feminine of the divine masculine. So right now what you're doing is integrating the masculine and the feminine into your vehicles. So that each and every one of you carries within you a spark of both. This is why you're finding people a bit more androgynous. This is why you're finding that um, you've got females who've even swung to the, to the extreme of the masculine. All right, so they can learn to come back once again and balance that. So they've got both feminine and masculine in the body. So all of you are, are working on that and also in your relationships so that you have a divine relationship, that there is a balance in each of you of the divine masculine and feminine. And it doesn't matter what kind of body you've got, whether you've got a male body or a female body and what combination in the partner, partnering there is. It's just a balance of both. And that's what you're all working on right now. But what most of you experience and what you're trying to integrate is the codependent relationship where you are not connecting directly to source, you're not co connecting to the divine feminine and masculine, but rather you're trying to connect to another being and all the distortions to get to the divine masculine and divine feminine. Because what you're feeling, that love feeling, is the closest thing that you can imagine on this planet to source. So you're trying to get it through them instead of going up directly to source. And when they walk away, you think source just left you all over again and you recreate that wound. That original fall, if you will. That sense of separation. You just keep reenacting it until you, you can see for yourself that it's really about the connection that you hold within. Now, the more you connect with yourself, the more you're going to be able to connect with everyone and everything. The difference is that you, rather than connecting with the distorted version of other beings, you're going to connect to the high version, their expanded self, the divine self. So does that help with your question? Yes. Um, but it is, it's a bit of a galactic game. There has been the suppression of both the divine fe feminine and the divine masculine back and forth. The felines are also another species where uh, the female is the dominant or has been for, for, for much of that game. They've been the dominant uh, of the species. Now your felines have been around on your planet assisting, holding the records and information of those, those beings for quite some time. And... Um, you know, you've, you've got uh, a lot of the insectoids. While they're not part of your seeding, they're also beings who've played a major role and continue to play a major role in what's going on. The spiders, some of the, the other insectoids, you may see um, uh, some that look like a praying mantis. All right, many of you may have encountered them. Some of that species is participating with you and sometimes not doing some of the nicest things. 
But again, you contract. You contract with these beings. Now your idea of abduction, while we're on it, let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, you know, the Zeta, a lot of what you consider to be the greys are experimenting with you. But here is a different perspective for you. Because you're going down to earth, you know you're going to play in this game of emotion. You've got plenty of emotion to, to kind of uh, explore. You know that you're not going to remember anything, so you figure, why not? Let's let them have some of the DNA and see if they can grow and expand as well. Because those species have cut themselves off from their emotional connection. And as a result, when you cut off the emotional connection, you alter the DNA. Now they've lost the ability to reproduce. So they work with the cloning process. But it's not going so well because it's like making a copy of a bad copy of a bad copy. So they need to introduce new DNA to strengthen the species. Now, at the higher levels, you love them all and many of you have been them. They're very advanced technologically, but a little retarded in their emotional growth. A little slow. So again, you're talking about duality and the balance in that regard. Spirituality, emotions versus technology. The inner versus the outer. They're cho choosing to play the outer. Does that sound familiar? To anything going on on your planet at this time? The cloning. <clears throat> Playing around with the DNA. You're pulling in all of that information from those species as well. Now, you contracted with them, but down here, the limited part of you, the ego part of you has forgotten that. So you just see it as a violation. You perceive it as I'm being abducted, I'm being taken. But you've forgotten that your higher self that has the free will says, yes, I'm not going to remember. But the problem is that now at this level, as you keep increasing your vibration, that there's a bleed through that you're beginning to remember. Now, when they did this hundreds of years ago, it didn't matter. But they didn't do it as often a hundred years ago because your emotional state and your own DNA wasn't high enough. Now, you got everything moving, you got everything buzzing, you got everything turned on, this is what they want. This is the jewel that they're looking for, that you agreed to share. And there's not one of you who is a victim. There is no such thing as a victim. You are all willing participants. You've just forgotten about your contract. And contracts can be written at any, rewritten at any time. They can be altered. If it's too traumatic, because some things are good in theory, but not so great always in the practical application. Because you thought, oh, well, I'm not going to remember. Well, yes, I am remembering. And I'm finding it really difficult to function. And it's interfering with all my other contracts, so we're going to have to cancel this one. So that can happen. And all these rewriting of contracts you do when you leave your body at night. You're working with these beings, but you contract it. And as we said many times, you are, or there are other aspects of you that are incarnated into that system. And you said, all right, well, we'll send you to Earth <laughs> where you can play the game. Now, some of these species understand that they're multidimensional. They understand that they are having other experiences in other lifetimes. Not all, because of the games that are set up. Some choose to forget that level of it. Or they're, they're not open to receiving that awareness. But some are aware. So other aspects of you are working with you because they know this is where all the good stuff is happening. And they want to help because they want to learn because they're not able to do it themselves, not from that vantage point. Take a breath. As we said, there are many levels and layers to this game. But you all have made it really simple on yourselves down here by thinking there's just one version of the game that you're engaged with and there's only one version of you. Makes it much easier, doesn't it? So, You've also got the spiders, the spider world. The spiders are quite aggressive. 
Um, many of them are in the Sirius and Orion systems, and they um, they breed quite quickly, so they're ever expanding, and so they have a tendency to take over other worlds. Your fairies that are on this planet um, found themselves invaded in the home world, and it was well, it was overrun by some of the spiders. So the fairies took refuge here on planet Earth, and they are here waiting, holding resonance until you're ready to take over stewardship of the planet. And they're operating in the fifth dimensional level. So there are a lot of species and a lot of other beings that are playing the game with you now. The draconian system is a system we haven't really talked about just yet. The draconians are fierce when it comes to bloodlines. And if you're not part of the family, it can be really challenging. If you are part of the family, it's great. You've got a built-in uh, support system. And the draconians have been, been playing around on the planet for about 150,000 years. They've been here. And many of them are underground right now. They're still playing around, but they've gone underground and, and they've gone interdimensional. They use portals to get down into the inner Earth. Now, Earth isn't hollow, but uh, we wouldn't describe it as being hollow. But we will say that it's, it, there are inner versions of the planet where they can generate their own stellar body, if you will. And they are participating at that level. They're still, they're still here. There are all kinds of underground tunnels and portals and... Um, interdimensional systems. Take a nice deep breath. <laughs> but most of this is beyond your awareness because this is how some of these beings wanted it. They didn't want you to remember your stellar origins. Because if you remembered your stellar origins, you would remember that you were a spark of divine source energy, that you were playing this game. Now, about 40,000 years ago, there was a new group of beings who started participating in this solar system. And you know them as the Anunnaki. And they had come before that, but really it wasn't until about 40,000 years ago that uh, they became a real player, if you will. And at the time of Atlantis, they were on Mars. And by the way, your other, uh, the other planets in the solar system are also inhabited. All right, just not in this dimension necessarily. Venus is teeming with life in the fifth and sixth dimension. A lot of the hybrids that we were talking about with, the, um, with some of the insectoids and also with the greys, these hybrids are on Venus. All right, so they're trying to work through and to integrate who they are as hybrids and work with and deal with all these emotions. And many of you who have donated your genetic material, by the way, are off working at night with your children. <laughs> yes. It's a lot to even think about. It sounds so fantastic. But you're going to find that it's not quite so fantastic. You agreed to donate this genetic material to help. And so you still work with them. And they still come and work with you. They, they're very telepathic, many of these hybrids. And so you may very well feel them. If you are one who has donated your genetic material, you may feel your children and, and not really understand it. Because you don't have an awareness of their physicality. That it's real. That you've donated your material. And there is a link energetically between you. Because they have your DNA. Just as if you had a child here on this planet. And that connection, that bond between parent and child through the DNA, it still exists. But for a human who doesn't remember that they gave their DNA and they're feeling all these emotions, they think they're going crazy. So, yes, there are other planets in your solar system that are teeming with life. And as you go through this ascension process, you're going to start to remember that you are part of this galactic community and you're going to start to interact with it. Now, you've had a lot of um, visitations, if you will, lately. Here, where we are, in New York City, 
You recently saw ships of light. Now, as we said, 40,000 years ago, the Anunnaki were, were starting to become a player in the system. The Anunnaki are from the Sirius star system. And they have very much like the spiders, who often they form allegiances with, they ventured out into the galaxy. They ventured forth and started conquering planets. They were very much into resources and consumption and seeing uh, how much power they could amass. And so there are many species who are under quote-unquote control, the illusion of that game, uh, with the Anunnaki. Some of the reptilians that you experience are doing the bidding of the Anunnaki, who are, by the way, humanoid. And the Anunnaki also have align, uh, um, alignments. They have alliances with the greys and some of the insectoids who are doing the dirty work, as it were. Now, at the time of Atlantis, near the fall, they were on Mars. And many of the Atlanteans, at least those among the priesthood, were interacting with the Anunnaki. Now, your priests in Atlantis, your priests and your priestesses, knew and remembered that they were multidimensional. Now, the masses of Atlantis had started to forget. They just weren't interested. They were interested in doing other things, and that was the priestly thing. And so they would communicate with other realms and dimensions, and they would communicate with the Anunnaki on Mars. Now, the Anunnaki saw an opportunity to get their foot in the door with the fall of Atlantis. They could see it coming. It was really pretty obvious. And so they gave some bad advice, and it was taken, and with the fall of Atlantis, they were able to once again um, find a new planet to play, play with. And they have been manipulating your history and a lot of the information about who and what you truly are. They were not the original deconstructors of your DNA, or constructors of your DNA, rather. But they did, they did do some genetic manipulation to humans so that you would forget who and what you were, so that they could utilize you. Because each of you, when you activate your energetic centers, is a walking vortex. You're a walking portal. And when you open those centers, you can access anything. They, however, have forgotten how to access and open all their centers, so they have to work outside themselves, very much like the other beings we were just talking about, like the greys. They have to use technology. They're doing it outside. And again, you're playing in duality, so you've got the inner technology versus the outer technology. Now, these beings that we're all talking about, it's really important that you don't fear them. Because, frankly, you are them. They are aspects of you. And it is just part of this game of duality. Do you all see the big game here? Do you see all the patterns that keep repeating again and again and again? So there's no need to fear it, but simply to be aware that there are different levels of the game being played. You all look at your Illuminati on this planet. They are a continuation of the dark priests of Atlantis. That knowledge and wisdom that was acquired and held during that time was passed along. And now they are using it for the same, in the same ways that those dark priests used it to amass power. All right, it wasn't used for the benefit of all. It was used for the benefit of the few. And they're still playing out that game. So the one thing we want to say here before we start to do some of the connections with the stellar realms is that you all simply be conscious of how you are feeling as we're talking about some of these species, as we're talking about the Anunnaki, as we're talking about the Illuminati, are you resonating in fear or do you have compassion? If you're resonating in fear, that's showing you that you are still playing out one of those programs, one of those original programs that probably came from one of those other star systems. Great. Now you've just identified a belief that's running at the subconscious level and you can integrate it. Again, integration is letting go of judgment. How do you let go of judgment? You shift from being a victim perpetrator 
to a co-creator. You see, you created it. Look and see how it is of service to you. Why did you create it? What are you learning about yourself as a being in the universe? As a being playing a game of duality, what are you learning? And when you can acknowledge this, that's when you shift to the role of creator. That's when you shift to a higher level of consciousness. And that's when you let go of judgment and that's when you integrate. And fabulously, that's how you send that information off to all those other parts of yourself. You say, ah, here it is. We always like to say it's like writing a recipe, a how-to book. And then you send it off to everyone else so they don't have to figure it out on their own. You're telling them exactly how it's done. Thank you for that, by the way. We appreciate it. So any questions? You're all so quiet. I've got a question. Yes. Okay, so each of us is here donning an individual ego that's connected to a higher self, or a higher self that's aware of all of our other probable realities. Yes. Now, in each of those other probable realities, is there an individual ego for each of us there? Yes. So what happens? It's a filter. The ego is just a filter. So there are different filters for each of those lifetimes that you're having. Now, some of them are still in the third dimensional game. Okay. All right, some of them are on Earth, 1700s, 1000 BC. So they still think they're separate. Perhaps part of you is in Atlantis or Lemuria. Oh, I meant more like in an alternate version of reality where I didn't come here tonight and I went off to the movies. Do you know what I'm saying? So like in the harp of probability, you say that if I jump to another string of the harp, there's a different version of me there. Yes. So is there a different version of my ego there? Yes, yes, because the ego, again, is just simply filters and distortions. So if you make another choice, you may have a different set of distortions. Okay. Your higher self which has no distortions, it is the real version of you. And really the ego is nothing but a filter. Your ego, uh, your higher self has that awareness. Your higher self knows that these are all just games that you sent yourself down to explore. It's like donning a different role for play. You change the character. When you make a choice, you can change the character. So if you think of it about it as an improvisation, all right, and you do it every night, one night you decide to change the setup. Well, the whole night from there on changes. And your character will change because you, you changed along with it. You changed the distortion. So yes, each version that you're projecting down onto each timeline, the ego is going to be slightly different because of the distortions. So as we ascend, we are, in a sense, combining all of those distortions and integrating into our higher self? Yes, you're releasing all the distortions because you're letting go of judgment. When you let go of judgment, you release the distortion. So in essence, what you're doing is clearing all the distortions so there are none and you see yourself as a fully expanded being. Make sense? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Anything else? Can, you talk more about can we talk more about Andromeda? Yes, we can. Um, they are seekers, the Andromedians are seekers of knowledge and wisdom. They are very proficient at the manipulation of time and space. They are many of them in the, um, in the higher realms are fascinated with molecular structure, they're fascinated with um, the space-time, the fabric that is illusionary, um, and, and how to manipulate it, how to, um, how to bend it, how to break it. Some are time jumpers, not as many. But they, they're fascinated with that. They work, some of the issues that they work on in that system are control, understanding the 
structure, the structure and the universal laws, the mathematics of it. They also work with compassion. Working with assistance, how to be of assistance, which is like being of service. Competence, interesting, that's, that's also one that's part of their galactic setup. What's your competence level? How proficient are you with mathematics? There's a lot of judgment about intelligence in that system as well. So they work with that. So those are kind of the big brush strokes of that system. It's, with all these systems, you can't really lump them all together. There's just kind of some broad strokes of, of what they work on. And they're light and dark expressions and, and different dimensions of expression. And as we said, each dimension has a different set of rules and they're going to focus on different things within that system itself. Make sense? Kind of. <laughs> yes. Anything else? Um, I would like to ask a question. Um, you mentioned um, realizing your higher self. Uh, that full realization of your higher self, does it mean that you're going to exit the games completely? And what, uh, if you're not participating uh, in both games, uh, what would it be like? So when you integrate your higher self, do you exit the game, and what would the game be like? Yes. So when you go from the third into the fourth dimension, yes, you're going to exit the game. When you have an expanded sense of awareness, you can't stay in the game. You're not going to want to stay in the game, so you're not. Because when you see how the illusion is created, there's no fun playing in it. So as you go through this ascension process, most of you are not going to have the big shifts in awareness that you, that you think are coming. You're saying, why, why does everything seem the same right now? Because you're not ready to step out of the game. You're not going to reveal the big secrets until you're ready to go. And that's why we say in the last days and hours what it's going to feel like for you all is aha moment after aha moment. You will have this unveiling of information, revealing of information um, that you allow yourself to, to experience. And once you get above the veil of the third dimension, it's not so dramatic with the other dimensions and shifting between them. It's a little more subtle. Because the construct of the third dimensional game is so different because you do think you're separate. And in the other dimensions, you also know that you are part of a collective. Now, some species have managed to disconnect themselves from their collective to a, a smaller degree. All right, say, uh, if we're talking about the greys, for example, again. They know they're part of a collective because they're telepathic and they can still communicate with their telepathy and they can feel and experience what others are experiencing, but they can still perceive themselves as an individual as well. So can we. Up in the ninth dimension, it's rare. We don't define ourselves so much as an individual. We can if we wish to, when we know that but we still align more as a collective. Now, the difference is that there are different collectives. So we play out a game that, as opposed to you as an individual, it's collective, and there's another collective, and there's another collective, which could be considered the difference as you play out as individuals. Does this make sense? Do you understand what we're trying to say here? So a collective can have a similar feeling in the ninth dimension as an individual has to you here. But yet again, we all know that it's, it's um, kind of cycles within cycles, same kind of thing, circle within a circle, that one collective is still connected and part of another collective. So where do you want to create those boundaries and how do you want to play with it? That's the interesting part of the game. Now, as you go through this process of ascension, when you get to the other side, it is not a utopia. <laughs> we want to make sure that you are aware of this. Because it would be really boring to create the same thing. Then there's no diversity. Well, the game is about diversity. So you will continue to create challenges 
And yes, you yourself as an individual and as a collective create the challenge, just as you're doing for yourself down here. You create your own challenges. Nobody does it to you. You're doing it. You create the problem and the solution at the same time. And then you're going to find the solution. But you created the problem in the first place. And we do that as well. Because that's how one creates. You have experience. And that's what Source has asked us to do. To go forth and have experience. So does that help? Yes. I just wanted to clarify, what if you're not playing games at all? Well, at that level, you're Source. If you're not playing any games at all, then you're you are fully aware at source level. Most of us will go forth and play a game. Or there will be an aspect or projection of us that's playing it, simply because that's what we do. We like to be challenged, we like to explore, we want to expand. But we are always playing at some level a game with rules and regulations and paradigms that we set up for ourselves. Make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? So where do the Ascended Masters fit in? Where are they? Many of you... Or, or, or are, they of a, are they of star systems that are beyond... It's like, is there a hierarchy of, of, of conscious awareness? Yes. Ascended vibration awareness? Is there a hierarchy? Yes, because again, you're in duality. So when you've got source, source, everything is equal. All right, the opposite of that is hierarchy. All right, so there is a level of hierarchy, but... That in itself is an illusion. And this is a big one we want to make sure you all get right here, right now. We don't want one of you to leave the room unless you get it. I love it. <laughs> it's an illusion. Higher is not better. Good. It's just a different game. And every single one of you is divine source energy. You are source. So it's impossible for you to be less than any other being in the galaxy, in the universe, in the multiverses. Impossible. You've just donned a role that's hiding information from yourself. Because at source level, you have access to everything. But in order to play a game, you put filters on. You lock information off, partition information off from you so that you can play the game. Now, it's just like remembering you have the library card. You can go and get information. There are beings who are terrified that you're going to go to the library, that you're going to remember that you source energy. Then how are they going to control you? Goodness, there's no way to do it then. When you know that you're divine source energy, that you're a sovereign being and you're creating this illusion anyway, hmm, how are they going to control you? They can't. So it doesn't really matter what's going on with some of the, the negative aspects, the games, the manipulation. As we said before, we don't want you to fear it. Because when you recognize that you're a creator being, you can create a different version of reality for yourself. And when enough of you decide that you want a different version of reality, then you create a brand new timeline where you alter the structure where you alter the current events, you alter your world. Welcome to Ascension. 
So now, as far as the ascended masters go, we will say this. We have a different perspective than they have. Doesn't mean that ours is right. Doesn't mean that ours is wrong. It's just different because we're playing in a different game. So we're filtering information in a different way. Now, some of your ascended masters are in the fifth dimension. Some of them are at a higher level. You may experience ninth or twelfth dimensional beings. Most probably at the ninth. It's rare that you encounter one that's at the twelfth. Simply because those at the twelfth aren't necessarily playing with you at this time. They're playing with other levels, other, other games. Those that are at the twelfth dimension are holding, holding planetary systems together. They're holding collective consciousness for those constructs that you're playing in so some of them as we said are in the fifth dimension um, some are in the ninth but those are collectives Quan Yin collective consciousness not a singular being what you perceive to be Jesus not a single being Christ consciousness collective consciousness is a ninth dimensional Many of the figures, the iconic figures that you have on your planet uh, that you think are literal are these collectives. But you've been sold a bill of goods about your history which is illusionary. And remember we said that the Illuminati are the, are the continuation of the dark priests of Atlantis. So they understand this and they have encoded the information. And if you understand the symbolism and the encoding, you're going to read it in a completely different way and it's not going to be literal. Most of you are interpreting things in a literal way because you've forgotten your sacred geometry, you've forgotten your numerology, you've forgotten your natural laws. So you've got to go back into the records, you've got to go back into your DNA and retrieve it, which is what you're all in the process of doing as you increase your frequency. You start to remember because you go beyond the veil. Now, you may encounter some of the ascended masters and you may still feel different, different vibrations from them. They may not feel the highest. Just because you've ascended beyond the third dimension doesn't mean that you have the highest perspective. You have a perspective. Remember, some of the beings who are interacting with you who are doing some of these, uh, some of these experimentations are in the same dimensions as your ascended masters. All right. Again, the higher dimensions aren't utopias. We just have different things that we work on and we have different perspectives. So you've got to take what resonates and leave, leave the rest behind. Whether you're getting information from an ascended master or whether you're getting it from us. doesn't matter. Because every being that you interact with is going to have an agenda. We have an agenda. For the most part, our agenda is to support you. But we're also here to learn from you to assist you, to bring out light and information. All right, so for another aspect of you that wants to hide in the dark, it doesn't want the light to come out. So they may not see our agenda as being in alignment with their own. Do you see what we mean? So that's why we always say, you are your own best authority. You are the best answers for yourself. You have better answers for you than we have for you or an ascended master has for you. And we have a different perspective than the white brotherhood about how to interact with you here on this planet at this time. They wish to work with you through the constructs and the illusions that are in place. We choose to sit here and tell you about your galactic history, which is very different. We think you're ready for it. We think you're ready for a new story, a new version of the truth. So we have a bit of a difference of opinion, and we'll be honest about that. With who? And then your white brotherhood, of which many of your ascended masters align. Has not been race. Not so much race, no. No, it's, it's different in operation and how you guide and assist other beings. 
We think you're ready. They think it will create too much shock. So it's being released in a slower way. And that's fine. There's enough for everybody. Everybody needs to work in different ways. So there are some who will align with that energy to help awaken them, some that will align with us. And somewhere we'll all meet in the middle. Make sense? Yes. So this is also, you know, the other levels here about competition and cooperation. See, it's playing out intergalactically, interdimensionally. Same issues. And this is why we tell you we're learning from you. As you learn to work it out here, you're sharing it with us. And we say, oh, well, that's a good way to do it. Why don't we try that? The difference is in the higher dimensions, our extremes aren't as extreme as yours. There's no place that's denser and more extreme than the third dimension. And then you add the emotional range that you've got and there's no other place in the universe like Earth because of your density and the extremes. But when you get up to the ninth dimension where we are, we always say it's the difference between light gray and medium light gray. Those are our, our extremes. They're not very extreme. We certainly don't blow each other up, destroy or annihilate each other, but we do disagree. And we find ways of resolving those disagreements. Sometimes they're rather unique. All right, but we're just playing a different game and we're interacting in different levels with you all. We find different ways of teaching. Because remember, in the Pleiades, we're teachers. So those of you who feel like you align as a teacher, chances are you are aligning with the Pleiades. So let's start there for a moment. Let's start with your primary connection and who you think you are aligning with this, at this time. All right. And what you can do, and we'll take you through a, a short little meditation here, is to start to call in information from those systems that you feel that you are aligning with. What is it that you are working on right now? And there may be a time where you feel, oh, I am aligned with the Sirius star system. That's my home. That's where I'm from. It may be that you are very drawn to Egypt. During the times of Egypt, after the fall of Atlantis, there's a lot of Syrian inaction. Your pyramids are antennae that allow you to project yourself out to those other star systems and to communicate with those star systems. So the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, is an alignment center with the Sirius and Orion systems. And if you find yourself aligning, with that time frame, it may very well be that you are working and pulling in those lessons from those systems. If you find yourself drawn to the crop circles, if you find yourself drawn to working with the language of light, chances are you're aligning with the Arcturus system. If you find yourself healing, working with sacred geometry, mathematics, Lyra. Compassion, love, the variations of it, Cassiopeia. bloodlines, you're probably aligning with the Draco system, family, fierce family connections. Not too many of you working in that at the moment. 50 years ago on your planet, yes. You were all working with bloodlines, worrying about it, trying to clear some of it. That is also a mindset that follows over from the Atlantean priests who wanted to work with the pure genetic line, who had the memory and the abilities that some of the Atlanteans had. So, if you all get comfortable and start taking some nice deep breaths, see yourself fully rooted in your body. And in the middle of your chest, envision a beautiful orb of golden light. And as this orb pulses and strengthens in its brilliance, as it grows brighter and stronger, you are able to see rays of this light extending out. And in this time and in this space, you are able to reconnect with your stellar wisdom. 
you are able to access the records through all time, through all dimensions, to receive wisdom from other aspects of yourself that are participating in the completion of this galactic game. From Alcyon, the central sun, information is pulsed to you. With information that contains your stellar history, your process of dissension, information regarding planetary systems that you've inhabited, lessons that you've learned, the memories of what's important, what you came here for, what you wanted to integrate to be of service to the galactic consciousness. Do you see this light pulsing across the galaxy? It passes through your sun, Helios, collecting records and information. As it passes through the sun, it passes by the inner planets and enters into Earth's atmosphere, entering down into the crown of your head and into that orb of golden light that you hold in your heart center. It is a stellar light and wisdom that you contain within you, that you have access to at will, at any time. And the information is revealed to you in the most appropriate way that is in alignment with your highest good and the highest intents for the benefit of yourself and all others. You are able to clearly and easily and effortlessly receive this information as you request it. And so it is. Take a nice deep breath. So when you are all ready, you can simply ask to receive more information. You can use this visualization if you wish, or you can simply ask. Your guides will help you. We'll help you. You can call on us specifically if you wish. It doesn't matter. But we want you to know that this is your information. It is available to you. You simply have to open yourself to receive it. Now, some of you will get triggered in fear. What if I see something I don't like? Remember, that's just part of yourself that needs integration. There's still judgment. You don't like it. And chances are you're playing that very same issue out in the now. Great, you've identified another fear. One more thing that you're able to integrate. But this is your divine right. You are a sovereign being. You are divine source energy. And these are your records that can be accessed at any time at will. All you have to do is get yourself heart-centered. Set your intent to open the book read a few pages and know that it is for your highest benefit and you're never going to see anything until you're ready. If you're not ready, there's too much fear, you're not going to show yourself anything and that's all right. Go back and see what gets triggered in the process because really that's what you want to do is to integrate your fears. So each time you can identify one, fabulous. You're one step closer to integrating it. Take another deep breath. What else would you like to know about? We've got a few more minutes here. I've got a question. Um, I've heard you say that, so our universe is one of duality, 
And yes. there are other universes, one with some with three aspects, some with six aspects. Yes. Uh, how high up does that go? And is, it, is the process of descension and reascension happening, that experiment happening under those circumstances? Yes, there, there are infinite universes. And that's enough to blow your mind. You can't even think of one. <laughs> even one galaxy for you is a stretch. Most of you have a hard time thinking about any species be beyond the human. But um, yes, there are, there are infinite ways that it plays out. The universe is a very, very large place. So are the multiverses. All right? Some of them are very small, by the way. They take up a small amount of space. Things are very compact. You can think of your body as its own little universe. All the cells are individual consciousness. They're also part of a collective. And your body thinks of you as God as you're giving it instructions. How's that? When's the last time you had a conversation with your body? We highly recommend it. Your cells get very excited when you do. But it's not all about expansion and, and, and moving out. It's also about contraction. Right? Things getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So universes can also be very small, not just vast and large. It's duality. And there are, as, as we said, yes, there are other systems that, you know, they're trinary systems where there are three polarities or six polarities. We like to keep ourselves entertained. So we keep creating new games. All right, well, we know what two feels like. What's three feel like? What's five feel like? How about 25? So would there be 25 sexes on a planet? Or... It's possible, um, not in this universe, uh, simply because you've got enough with two or three. All right? But yes, it is possible. It certainly is. It's a lot when you all start processing that in the mind. So what we suggest, if these concepts can feel a bit overwhelming, First, know that we're depositing all kinds of information into your energetic field. So we like to, th like to describe it as packets of information. So there's a lot more detail than just the single words that you're getting. Now, we are giving you more information than what you are simply asking for verbally, even for those that are listening to the recording. As they are asking questions, we are depositing information in the field because the second that they hit the play button on the recording, we connected with you, or we connected with them. Because time and space is an illusion to us. It doesn't matter. When you connect with us, we feel it because we are connected. We acknowledge you. We shift our focus to you, and we communicate and exchange information with you. So whether you're here live with us now, if you go back and listen to the recording, it'll happen again. If you're someone who wasn't here and you're listening to the recording, we connect with you. So if you're asking a question in your mind and not verbalizing it, we're still giving you the answer. How's that? Great. Yes. So don't worry if you feel like it's a lot to chew on. Some of these things, are, you know, it's, it, can, it can be creating tension in your body. If that's the case, be aware of it. Know that that's just triggering fear. What fear is creating the tension in my body? Safety, security, control, manipulation, authority issues. Check in with yourself. Great, one more fear identified, closer to ascension. So... If you're having a hard time processing it through the mind, you can always picture it as an orb of light and drop the orb down into the heart. All right, The orb is the information you're trying to digest. And if you can't process it through the brain because the brain, the mind is throwing out all the data, the heart can hold all of it. You may not have the words for it, but you have the feeling for it. You say, oh yes, I know this feeling. It feels expanded, it feels connected. And eventually, you will start to develop the language or a 
limited version that will allow you to digest it with the mind. But that will come with time. And eventually, you're going to step out of the mind altogether and just start operating in the heart. But you're not going to do that until you're ready to leave this dimension. While you're still a third dimensional being, you're still going to use the operating system that you've got. So you'll flip back and forth constantly. And sometimes you'll flip, you'll stay there for a while, and then you can't maintain it. And you'll drop out. And this is very typical for the ascension process. That you'll be feeling really good. And we had the question earlier about this. You'll feel really good and then you'll drop out because when you start to activate those higher feelings, those, the, the joy, the love, all the lower ones get activated so that they can be projected, so that you can integrate them, so that you can maintain that higher frequency because you can't maintain it if the lower ones are there. And then you drop out, you go back up, you stay there for a little longer, you drop out again, probably not as far because you've done some clearing. And then you go back up, you stay there longer and again and again and again until you hold a level of conscious awareness and you hold it for such a long time that you begin to alter your physical vehicle and you change your physical vehicle to a body of light as opposed to a dense carbon based vehicle that is ascension that's what you're in the midst of doing and in the process you can experience some physical symptoms which can feel a bit uneasy to you at first you may feel it You've got a few aches and pains. Typically, that's the body releasing, letting go. Water, 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 water. You need more of it. It will help to clear the vehicle. Oxygen is the other one. Breathing, conscious breath, moving energy. That's the other thing that's going to assist you. All right. So, one of the other things that we would suggest, if you have a sense of who your primary system is, what you can do is take that constellation. If you can find an image of that constellation that those stars exist in, and connect with the image. As above, so below. You work holographically. So as you are working on that image that represents that thing you want to connect with, you connect with the actual system. So you can work holographically to connect with that star system through the constellation. Do you all understand what we mean? Mm -hmm. So as you focus on that constellation, and we recommend that you draw it out by hand, because that will connect you in a different way than just staring at a picture, but if you can draw the major points on the stars, that's going to activate you in a different way. And then try connecting with it. See yourself going into that drawing as opposed to having to project yourself out. Because the, the process of projecting yourself inward for you all feels deeper. Because if you go out, it feels too expansive, it feels too big, and you feel overwhelmed many times. But you can work on the small scale right in front of you. So try connecting with it. How does it feel? What gets triggered? What gets activated? What gets revealed? And there may be several star systems that you feel that you are aligning with. Try playing around. Some of them may be secondary, or they may be systems that you've spent time in, but you are focused on something else for now, because you're working on those lessons at the moment. The others will come in a few weeks, a few months, or you've already integrated them. Make sense? Any questions? Can you explain more? You were explaining about how the children of the world are connecting the children of the earth and how uh, the question is how are the children of the earth connecting to the new paradigm and how that will affect what's going on mm -hmm. so many children are coming plugged in already to the fourth dimensional mindset because there isn't enough time to plug into the third transmute everything and then get out all right you've been at this for a while you've been working at a while but for them to come in, integrate into this paradigm and then transmute it all is too much. So many of the children are coming plugged in. This is also why you're seeing so much autism. This is why you're seeing so much ADD. It's just uh, these are ways for them to cope. 
All right, it's also a way for you to all see that you're living out of balance with your bodies and with the planet. But there, again, there are different levels that you can look at this at. It's rare that anything just has a single level to look at. It's not always literal. But when you're feeling that you are connected with the whole, and yet what you're connecting with it, at the whole level is very dysfunctional, and you're down here for the first time, or you haven't been here very often and you're still in a young body, it can be really challenging. And so some of these physical things come up as a way of coping, of, of separating, but disconnecting a bit from the body and numbing the body so that you're not feeling all the emotion that you're connected to. Do you understand what we mean by that? Mm -hmm. So they are your greatest teachers. They already know what it's like to be in harmony with the planet. This is why children are so great at teaching you how to, to live in harmony. Teaching you to recycle. Teaching you how to be kind to each other. Teaching you how to, to care about other species. They're also very good at working with the internet and the collective consciousness because they're already plugged into it. They already know what it's like because they're participating in it. For some of you, it's a bit more of a stretch. All right, so they're here to teach you to be the bridge to get you to that mental state. Make sense? Does that help? Yes. So we've got time for maybe one or two others. So what can you yeah. do when you've been out of your body to, to remember? Yeah. When you wake up. Grounded into the physical vehicle, so that's why writing, or even speaking aloud what you've just experienced will help you to remember it and to integrate it. Many of you are waking up between 3 and 5 a.m. and this is happening because... Why you, is that with 3.15 every several mornings in a row? Because you're completing a cycle and it's your way, when you see this repeated pattern, you can't miss it. So you know that there's something going on when you keep waking up at the same time. It's not just you kind of waking up. It's to get your own attention. So what you need to do is something physical to get that information out. What are you feeling? You, you may not know exactly what you experience, but say, all right, I'm waking up and I'm feeling really anxious or I'm feeling really peaceful, really grounded, and go with your stream of consciousness there and start writing about it, typing about it, painting, drawing. Uh, if you do any other creative endeavor, utilize the body because you're waking yourself up so that you can pull this information into your conscious awareness so that it's not a lucid dream, so that it's not something that's, that's intangible. You're pulling it in and making it real. So it's very, very common. Now, if you're waking up exhausted, you need to reset your contracts. Because as we said, it's good in theory, but not always in practical application. So you say, oh, my body will be fine. Your body says, no, we are not fine. We need sleep. Because what happens when you sleep, you're connecting to source energy and you're recharging the cells. Now, if you're using a lot of energy to pull information in, the cells aren't getting recharged. Now, you also can charge the cellular structure while you are awake by connecting to source. Literally, that's what fuels the body. When you eat plants, plants are absorbing source energy. Animals are absorbing energy from the plants or they're getting it directly and then you're consuming that. Eventually, you're gonna stop eating food because you're gonna be connected to source all the time. You know how to reconnect so you don't have to eat food. Because you've been disconnected, that's why you eat. So, 
If you are fatigued, then you need to rewrite those contracts or you can spend more time in connection during the day, during the waking state to recharge your vehicle. Most of you have a, a challenging time doing that. It's not hard, all you have to do is think of something that puts a smile on your face and hold it. But what will happen oftentimes is that you'll get triggered because you're holding the high vibrational state so all your lower stuff gets activated. So ask your friends to come back another night when the body's recharged. Because for us on this side, we don't care. We simply connect with you at another point. It doesn't mean that we've got to sit around and wait. We simply choose another moment. Doesn't matter. So we'll, we will honor that and just ask your guides for some assistance in that realm and getting a good night's sleep to recharge the body. We'll help. All right? Thank you. You're welcome. What else? Last question. Anyone who hasn't asked? Yes. If I, if I go to, before I go to sleep and I say, okay, I've had enough of this game or this, you know, I want, I want to rewrite my contract, will they honor that? They will, but look at where you're coming from, the energetic state. We want to look at that because it's not just that you're fatigued. There's, there's anger and irritation in there. There's frustration that you're carrying right now. And that's what you need to acknowledge and kind of look at. Why are you feeling frustrated? What are you upset about? I'm not changing. No matter how hard I try and try to keep that frequency up high, and there's too much, I think, um, density at all angles, all aspects. Well, you never take on any more than you're ready for. Let us say that first. All right? You have more, of, you are divine source energy, don't forget that. And if you find that you aren't getting what you're asking for from the universe or what you think you want, look and see what you are getting because the universe brings you what you need in order to get what you want. Because it may be a stretch for you to hold that high vibrational thing you're asking for. So the universe says, all right, well, we've got to get your vibration up. And you've got this program running on abandonment and you've got this one, I'm not good enough. So it starts bringing you reflections for those other lower vibrational things. And then you're looking at your physical reality and saying, well, I keep asking for this high thing and I'm not getting it because it's too big a stretch. So you've got to look and see what you're getting back. And that's, if you're in the moment, what you can address to clear, to integrate so that you can get yourself up to get what it is that you want. That's how you start creating change. Look and see what you're creating in the now. All right. Now, we will say one last thing here. The more specific you are in your requests for information, the more we can help you. Because if you say, tell me, what do I need to know? We say, where do we begin? <laughs> and oftentimes you all have something in mind that you really want to know about. You just haven't formulated it into a sentence. So when we give you something that's different, you're disappointed. All right, so we're putting you in the hot seat. We're putting you in the driver's seat to figure out and to question yourselves and say, what do I really want? You all aren't used to being in the driver's seat, but you're creative beings. You've always been in it. You've just forgotten. So now you need to do it consciously. You need to start asking questions. You need to be curious again. The more you connect with source, the more curious you become. The more you want to create, the more you want to explore, the more you want to expand. And if you are feeling that you don't have any inspiration, you don't know what you want, then you need to start connecting to Source. You need to take time to make that connection. But many of you say, I don't have time. If you take the time to make that connection, then you're in the flow. If you're in the flow, everything comes. You don't have to keep repeating things. You don't have to keep going back to things. So you actually make more time for yourselves by starting your day off in the flow. Connected to source. How do you connect with source? Find an image that puts a smile on your face that makes you feel lighthearted, warm, tingly, uplifted, expanded, joyful. It's not challenging. And if you have a hard time with that, pull up a picture of baby animals. 
<laughs> that usually puts a smile on most of your faces. You all are laughing now. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> all right. And we suggest animals or places simply because there are usually programs running about people that you may not be aware of. All right. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up for this evening. But know that there is a lot of support for you, as we've mentioned. Uh, the galaxy is a very vast place and everybody's watching. And you are the true masters down here on the planet. You are the ones who are teaching us. Don't sell yourself short. Don't discount the power that you have. For you truly are divine beings. Recognize that in yourselves. So dear ones, we will be watching and waiting and sending many well wishes. <laughs>